and welcome. This is Ray Chrisman again from RL Chrisman Metalworks. Wanted to do a quick update here. Came out here the other day to install the power feed on my mill drill and I ran into a slight problem. It was my fault, not a problem with the power feed, but let me show you what I ran into here. As you can tell from the mess on the mill drill here, I've been making chips with this machine. Anyway, there's the power feed installed on the mill drill. Let's see if I can zoom in here just a little bit. When I was putting this together, this piece right here, I ended up having to make. This was the original piece. Went in there like that in place of this one. There's two bolts back here that, were, that you tighten down. It tightens up against the end of the table there to hold this piece in place. And the problem that I had was I tightened the bolts too tight. My own fault. It ended up cracking this piece down in here and in here on both sides. I don't know if these cracks are showing up on the video or not. But anyway, I broke this piece. You can see how it's bent right there. But I broke this piece and I wanted to get the power feed on here. I wanted to start using this thing. Luckily, I have a backyard metal casting foundry, so I went out and I fired up my furnace, mixed up a little bit of green sand, <coughs> made some casting flasks, using this piece as a pattern, I uh, went ahead and cast a new one, and I, uh, I actually made it a little bit bigger. I, covered certain parts of this with some blue painters tape just to make it thicker so that I had something that I could mill off. But anyway, I cast up a new piece and then put it on a mill. That was my first project with this mill drill was machining this down to get all the machine surfaces right to remake this piece. And I've got to say, the mill drill worked excellent for doing that. Um, I just used a three-quarter inch end mill, milled the whole thing out. All the different surfaces, this one, this one, the bottom edge of that, this top surface, the bottom of it, this front face and the sides. Got all the, all the surfaces machined true and square. And then uh, with it on there, I was able to go ahead and uh, use a center drill and a, a drill and a tap all mounted in the chuck on the drill, the mill drill. So I was able to get all the holes in the right spot and get them perfectly straight and tapped. And anyway, I got the new piece made, got the power feed mounted on there, as you can see. Forward, reverse, got the rapid pass Anyway, I got the power feed on there. Like I said, this is one of the pieces of optional equipment that you can purchase for this machine. Um, I really like having it. I wish I had had it on there when I was making this piece. It would have made it a lot easier. As it was, I didn't have this on there because this piece was broke. So, I, of course, I had to uh, hand crank the table back and forth, but it worked fine. And I was able to uh, machine this piece out. The, uh, the finish is, 
is good. It's not perfect. I was using an old end mill rather than one of my new ones. I just was practicing basically. So I used an old end mill. So the machine surface isn't exactly perfect on it, but it's pretty good. Between one pass and the other, I can't feel any difference across there. Um, if I had the power feed on there and was able to use the power feed to feed across there, it would have come out even smoother. And with a brand new end mill, it would have come out smoother even. But uh, I was very happy with the way this thing worked. I was, I was happy I was able to cast a new piece. I had everything I needed to be able to do that. So I was able to cast it and then bring it right in here on the mill and uh, go ahead and machine it. Made a new part. Even though I messed up and broke this one, that uh, didn't keep me from installing the power feed. I was able to go ahead and cast a new piece and, and then go ahead and machine it and make it fit. So anyway, that uh, just kind of goes to show the use of a machine like this. Um, I didn't have to order a part and wait for it to come in. I was able to just go ahead and make it and get this all put together. Uh, anyway, just a quick update there to uh, to show you that I did get the power feed on here. I did want to actually video putting it on here, but there wasn't really that much to it. This piece bolts on with just two bolts right here. And then this piece has two bolts down here that thread into this, and this is slotted here so that this just slides down over those two bolts and you can adjust it with it being slotted you can adjust it up and down so that the gear down here will mesh um, I had to take the handle off the end of the shaft and then once that handle was off there was a gear that slid on the shaft and uh, spline into the same spot where this handle would have on there and then there was a little set screw to hold that gear in place like I said you put the gear on there mount this on slide this down over those other two bolts get it adjusted height wise so that the gear would mesh right without being too tight or too loose tighten up those two bolts uh, this wire had to plug in right here and uh, and then just plug it in. I also got this stop switch mounted on here. It works in either direction plus these are the original stops. These are the stops that came with the power feed. Um, let me show you here. I guess you probably couldn't see part of what I was showing you there. Remember that green tag is? That's the uh, uh, table travel stop switch. I can show you how that works. Let me move this just right like that. If I feed that direction. Let me speed it up. Once the stop gets over to the switch, it'll stop the feed. it down. Bring that back to the off position and start feeding the other direction. That's quite a range on the feed rate on that table with that 
power feed. I think that's going to come in really handy when I really start doing some some machining with this thing. Anyway, power feeds on there. I need to clean up my mess on this thing and uh, next video I'm going to be starting to install the DRO on this machine. I'll get that one installed and then I'll start installing the DRO on the delay in another video. But the next one is going to be on putting the DRO on this machine. I haven't decided yet where I'm going to actually mount the readout, but uh, I need to get the scales mounted on here first. So. Anyway, this will end this video, then I'll clean up the machine, and uh, the next one will be on installing that DRO. Thanks for joining me here today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Got to see a little bit on how this power feed works on this machine. Anyway, you have a good day. Happy machining. We'll see you next time.